it's the info. It's the man with the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. It's the man with the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. It's the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. We got the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info man. You can call him information. Info man. Kicking knowledge all over this nation. Win, lose, or draw. You can bring your hate team. But if you want to win, please don't bring your debate team. We talking Japanese shogun. Aztecs, old mix, and African dogun. This is Information Man News, breaking news. I'm going to talk about a few things. I'm glad that everybody is here. Thank you for uh, supporting me. Those of you that have uh, subscribed to the channel, uh, those of you that are new to the channel, go ahead and uh, follow me. I definitely appreciate it. What I want to do first, uh, I am going to get into crime statistics uh, that is from the FBI, which is the latest from 2017 that I'll pop up on the screen pretty soon. But these statistics are relevant. But I also want to give a shout out to everyone that has supported me within YouTube, uh, those that I've been on panels with, that I have shared a conversation with. And of course, we've had some heated battles on YouTube, heated conversations. But you know what? We're still brothers. And this show will be related to black men, but black people in general. Uh, let me give a shout out to my man, Gab Talk Media. And then there's a brother that I just had a chance to conversate with that goes by the name of Black Outcast Media. We got CRU, Brother Art, who actually inspired me to do this video when he sent me these statistics. And I'm aware of it. I mean, I know a lot of you out there, or some of you, are aware of the FBI statistics, statistics as it relates to criminality in our society and we know that black men are always being labeled as criminals well I'm gonna change that narrative or reinforce the narrative that we're not okay that black men are, are, are doing very well in a lot of areas and we don't give ourselves enough credit for what we are doing correct let me give a shout out to O'Shea Du Jackson Super Sly my man Super Sly BGS uh, we got my man Tony Garrison AM1, Brother Dynast, goes by the name of Search for Uhuru. Love that brother he's put me on, along with O'Shea. We got C Boogie out there, okay? We got uh, uh, Underrated Darkness. That brother's been uh, very supportive. Uh, love what he does. The Black Brain Trust. Make sure you all go over there and support the, the Black Brain Trust. I did interview them not too long ago. Then we got Super Trez. We got Prophet of Thought Series. We, we got Nagoon. I love my man Nagoon. Obsidian, you know what he does over there. Low cast. Let me give a shout out to some of the ladies. We got Nyla Says out there. We got Nicole Ali. We got Sister Nicole, who I was just on her panel not too long ago. She's a sister that you've seen on O'Shea's uh, Sunday Rumbles, who talks about uh, femininity. Uh, she gives sisters game on how to, how to be more feminine, how to carry yourself as a lady to attract the right type of man that you feel that you deserve. So she does some great things over there. Let me give a shout out to, uh, soup, uh, to my man, uh, Sinfo the P. Um... There's so many people out there that I can shout out to. If I haven't sh given you a shout out, uh, my thoughts are with you out there. Those of you that have been very supportive of the program, we got my oh Life Machine Power. Uh, there's a lot of great, got a lot of good folks out there. Uh, the uh, uh, Educated Smoker, uh, GG Poetic Celts, 
uh, CC, uh, uh, my sister uh, BB Scratcher. There's a lot of good sisters out there. We got my man uh, Cap, uh, Cap CY, CY, CYP2, Cap. He's a military veteran, so I want to give a shout out to my man Cap. He's been very supportive of the program and everybody out there who's listening and in the chat room right now. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, we know there's a lot of shit going on in the news right now. Everyone knows about uh, uh, Jesse, you know, the brother from uh, from Empire. He's got his issues. The question is, did he make this up? Did he not make this up? Uh, there's still a lot to come out on the story as to what is true, what is false. Let me also go ahead and uh, let me put my head set up on hit set up on right now. Hit set. Thank you. Let me go ahead. And um, also talk about R. R, uh, R. Kelly. Uh, of course, he got arrested. It's a, it's a long time coming. Uh, the brother he did he did, he's done some things uh, that's inappropriate with underage females. But I also think that the family members, if you're gonna arrest R. Kelly, some of the family members need to be arrested because some family members were were complicit in allowing R. Kelly R. Kelly access to their daughters okay going all the way back to Aaliyah when he was with her and her uncle or what have you brought Aaliyah to this man so all the family members that entrusted their children with this man that knew that something was going on and, and continued to let this shit go on because they thought they were going to make some money they're going to turn their daughters into stars they're just as implicit all the people that worked in R, R. Kelly's uh, inner circle they're also responsible for what has unfolded uh, right now. And then I think what, there's an old saying, what goes around comes around, and I think he's, it's coming around on him. But I also have to be honest and say intellectually that I find it interesting that black men are becoming the brunt of these Me Too and these issues when you do have other men, particularly uh, Caucasian men that are out there doing things uh, but they don't seem to be the ones that you're seeing getting arrested and being put in handcuffs. So R. Kelly, I think they're, you, they're, they're making an example of him. And I have to agree with Jason Black and shout out to Jason Black of the Black Channel when he says that one of the reasons why they're coming at Kelly because he doesn't have any more power anymore. He doesn't own his masters to his music. And now that he does not have the money and the juice anymore, he doesn't become, he's not economically viable to the music industry. They no longer now can protect him in his, in his, his, uh, his inappropriate or his deeds that he's been engaging in. So now they're willing to throw, to throw, to throw him under the bus. And that does happen sometimes. Um, so black men have always historically been made examples of, and we have been defined as criminals and pathological in our behavior in this society. Let me also give a shout out. I was with BGS one night and Brother Tony had a, got into a heated discussion, lost a little bit of my cool. Me and the young brother, I guess he goes by the name The Grinch, had a few words and once again, I once again I want to say much respect to that brother. We had a disagreement on a few things. We got into it with each other. I'm gonna still say he's still my brother and much respect to him, much respect to BGS and Tony and everybody around there. And let me also say to my man Cerulean Gray, I think uh, I had a conversation with him once with Brother Nagone. We got into a little bit of exchange and I wanna say still I respect that brother much respect to him. I know that he has a lot of knowledge as it relates to sociology and the breakdown of what's happening with the black family. And he is a proud brother who has military experience. And let me give a shout out to Charles Faulkner, uh, the brothers over there that do it real good. And uh, Kevin Samuels, get your image on. Uh, women want men that are assertive, that are intelligent and carry themselves with a certain level of confidence okay so I have to agree with brother Kevin Samuels and his point of view and the way he handles himself so let me go ahead and get right into this program this breaking news program uh, once again a lot of you we've grown up uh, you can go back to what's that movie a birth of the nation where it depicted if you once you, if you freed black people that black men would savage after uh, the white man's woman that the black man would take over the government 
uh, destroy everything, bring the system down. And even in that movie, they had stereotypical depictions of black men eating fried chicken, putting their feet up on the, on the, on the chairs and stuff in Congress and in the government, and just destroying the world. That's the narrative that they want to uh, project of black men and black people. Historically, that has been the narrative, and that's a narrative that is not true. Let me go ahead right now and put a and, and, and get right into these numbers. I'm gonna read off these statistical numbers from the FBI's. Uh, there, this is coming straight from the FBI that will put a ringer into this notion that criminality is a pathology and is is that it is only black men who engage in criminality at a high level to the point that we sh our pictures should be in the dictionary. That's a false narrative. Let me paint this other, other thing that's very important to know. Uh, there's been studies, it's, it's a reality, that if you go to poor schools, poor education, poor teachers, poor environment, uh, if the family structure is broke down, then you, are going, you have a, a higher chance of entering into the prison industrial complex system. Now I know this well because I work as a therapist in the prison system in here in California. I deal with young black males, Latino males, white males. I see it all. I see the statistics. I see the criminal files. I can tell you definitely who's committing the most crimes and what type of crimes just based on what I see and what I run across. And I talk to these individuals. Those of you who talk about white supremacy, white supremacy. I deal with uh, these type of characters, you know, whether it be the Aryan Brotherhood, all the different white gangs, all the different gangs in general. So I get a chance to up close and personal to understand their ideologies and why they think the way they do. So this is very important for us to keep in mind uh, that there, there's an ideology to criminality. But I'm going to be break this down right now. Black men, for the most part, that are in prison are not in prison uh, primarily because we did a drive-by shooting, we murdered someone. A lot of black men are in prison due to drug-related charges, a scouting from uh, meet, seeing their their PO, their uh, you know their PO, their pro officer. Uh, maybe they got a bad drug test, a dirty drug test. Um, a lot of times it's for selling drugs, using drugs, things of those natures. Even though. Uh, Caucasian people use drugs at a higher rate than black males or black people. Now that's a fact. You can look these these things up. But these are the things that lead to uh, black men being incarcerated. Not necessarily because we're doing the most disastrous crimes. White men in American society are the ones doing what we call mass shooting. They're doing things where they got a lot of guns, they're going into schools, they're doing a lot of destruction. We've all seen it in the news, but yet, for whatever reason in our society, you don't tend to see them uh, under a microscope. They're not being profiled. When Timothy McVeigh blew up the building in Oklahoma some years ago, you didn't see American society or police say, let's profile all white men who have a crew cut, a crew cut military style haircut, right? Even though I don't think he did that all by himself. Not to get too, too conspiracy, but I think conspiracy theories, I think he didn't do it by, all by himself. I think he had some help. But let me go right into this right now. I'm going to break this down step by step. Okay, this is FBI. This is for the United States. When it comes to murder and manslaughter, white men lead in this in this country at 52.4%, while black men are at 43 three percent okay rape as it relates to rape because a lot of people think that black men are rapists when it comes to rape white men lead as I just put on the screen here the you see on the screen the little statistical stat, uh, uh, tablet that comes from the FBI uh, that breaks down what I'm what I'm saying to you or about to continue saying to you right now White men lead at 74.8% seven, seven, while black men are at 22.9% when it comes to rape, okay? This is a reality. So we don't lead in that area in this country. Robbery, people think that black people, we're, th we're thieves, we're lazy, we don't work, we don't have jobs. Well, robbery 
white pe white men are at 47.0 percent black men lead a little bit this is a couple points higher at 51.7 percent but you can see that those are running close to each other so white men are doing robbery black men you know there is some areas in which we are doing some robbery there in that area aggravated assault most people think that black men are very violent that we assault people that we hurt people well white men lead in that area uh, aggravated assault at 68.3 percent while black men are at 229.2 percent okay let's get into burglary okay now although black men at robbery is at 51.7 percent while white men are at 70 at 47 point percent in robbery robbery is just simply if i was to stick you up right now say give me your wallet right that sort of smash and grab type stuff but burglary is when you're entering someone's uh premises you're entering and that brings up a potential for violence if someone's home you're breaking into doing commercial robbery you're breaking into homes um white men lead at 72.0 percent while black men are at 26 point three percent in this area okay so this is a this is a reality folks motor vehicle theft uh white men lead this at 72.5 percent where black men are at 24.7 percent i know this this is very well i live when i lived in san francisco when i was in high school during the early 80s the majority of the, I mean, I used to hang, I used to have uh, friends that were Asian. A lot of, you know, you have a large Asian population in San Francisco, and I had my friends in school that were Asian, and they would say, "Hey, we're involved in robbing cars and tricking those cars out." He say, "I could steal your car and drive right past you in your car, and you would never recognize that it's your car because we could trick it out." And that's and so, you know, black people with that, that's not where we're highest at, seventy-two point five percent. Uh, white men do this type of crime 24.7 percent and I know in San Francisco at the at, during the early 80s you had a lot of Asian kids that were deeply involved in the boosting of cars and tricking them out okay just from my you know anecdotal experience um, let's go into arson mm -mm -mm. no black people we do not even get down with that arson stuff because arson is high is being led by once again white men at 75.2 percent black men at 22.5 percent uh arson so we ain't into setting fires like Smokey the bear type stuff okay no that ain't us now let's get into violent crimes very important violent crimes white men lead in this country at 64.9 percent as it relates to violent crimes while black men are at 32.8 percent so white men lead in violent crime. So black men, we, you know, people think that we go around hurting people. It's not, it's just not so, okay? Say it ain't so, but it ain't so. Now, property crime. Once again, I told you earlier that uh, white men lead when it comes to burglary, going in people's homes, right? Well, property crime. Guess who leads in that? White men lead at 68.9 percent while black men are at 29.2 percent so once again white men in american society lead when it comes to property crime i know this to be true because when i'm at work and i see these records you see what people are doing and i see it it's, it's, it's not, not a, now this other category is other assaults and those other assaults could be a variety of different things but they have it at 70.4% for white men, 27.3% for black men leading in this area. Okay, so white men once again lead in that area. Now, f forgery, counterfeiting, people giving you fake money, forging checks, doing all types of what you would call heist and a daspery type of behavior, white men lead in this area again at 64.0% percent 64.0 percent black men are at 33.9 percent now if i'm saying this too fast watch this video again so you can get these statistics you got i got it on the screen here but most importantly you can look these these this these statistics up for yourself 
and analyze it for yourself, okay? Um, oh, let me give a, a shout out to ABL. ABL, I know he's going to disagree with me. I've been on O'Shea's channel on Sundays on the Sunday Rumble. I've gotten into it with him about this because we have to make sure as black people, as people on YouTube, that we don't use racial narratives or narratives that come from people that have been oppressing us to define ourselves, okay? And so long, we tend to look at black men as these monsters, and I'm gonna despair that. Now, when it comes to fraud, white men once again lead at 68.2% when it comes to fraud, all right? Running games on people, defrauding people out of their money, out of their property, out of their whatever. 30.1% black men engage in this, but white men at 68.2%. So this is, you know, this is about telling the truth. Tell the truth. And we got to tell the truth, okay? We got to tell the truth. We got to keep it real because information, information is power. power. And it's going to always be power. And for everybody that I shouted out on this, on this report, uh, I forgot to give you a clap, so here's a clap for you. That's right. That's right. That was a much needed clap for you. So let me go ahead and go into the last portion of my report. And I hope everybody's doing well. Let me get a bit of, of a drink here. I hope everybody likes the new studio here that I'm setting in. I'm probably going to be doing this as part of another series, doing news reports. And I still am going to do the Black to Black AM series where I get into like science and I talked about, I think the last one I did was about 5Gs, how 5Gs is, go is going to really be an impact on us being bombarded with all that magnetic, uh, you know, uh, energies that are affecting our body. How does it affect us in terms of cancerous uh, radiations? Uh, we're already been bombarded with the cell phones, all this technology. Will 5G's take it to another level? They're going to be lowering the uh, cell towers to make this work better. I know over in the UK, they already have scientists, a lot of scientists that are studying this. They're saying put a moratorium on this 5G's technology. They're very... Uh, concerned about it. And then I did another report about television, the effects of television as it relates to the alpha waves and the beta waves in your brain and how television really makes your mind operate on alpha waves, which pacifies your brain and your development versus beta waves. And I'm going to be talking about next for the Black to Black series, I'll be getting into the Illuminati. Does the Illuminati still, still exist? Does it not exist? How is it relevant today? Is it a figment of our imagination? Are we simply making the Illuminati more powerful than it really is by believing in it? So I'm gonna delve into that area of the black, next Black to Black series. I'm gonna talk about cell phones, the impact of that once again on the alpha and beta waves in our brain, and the way our brain works. So now with that said, let me get back to the topic at hand. And I wanna thank everybody once again who is supporting the program. Here we go. Embezzlement. Oh yes, this is another one. White men lead in embezzlement in this country, the United States, at 62.7%. While black men are at 35.8%. Okay? Stolen property. White men, again, they do a lot of, they, they, they're very, they, they, they have a, they're white men, in this country are white people. Let me let me let me let me uh, clarify that. When this talks about crime between wh uh, white men and black men, this is also includes white people just in general. So these statistics are basically a broad statistics that covers white society versus black society. And I'm doing this because black people we've always been judged, we've always been critiqued as it relates to white society that has deemed us to be criminals in some cases historically. Uh, so stolen property, 66.8% for white people. 
31.4% for black people. Vandalism. Mm-mm-mm. That's not something that we do. Okay, it's the people. White people are at 73.2%. 24.8% for black people. Okay, now I said black men, white men earlier. We do know statistically men do tend to engage in crime more than women do. However, women do engage in crime. And the last time I checked, the, uh, checked did some research on this, they say that uh, uh, women are increasing in being incarcerated. So crime amongst women is starting to go up in our society where women are now starting to go up in incarceration and men are starting to decrease a little bit. However, keep in mind, you got these private prisons. You know, prison for profit. And when you make it, when you have pro- private prisons in the society, that's going to give police officers, judges, and the whole legal system an incentive to arrest you for any and everything. Okay, to get you in that private prison so that they can profit off of you. And shout out to the chat room and everybody that's watching and supporting the channel again. Now, weapons. You know, remember they had the fris. The Frisk program in New York where they would stop f- stopping Fricks, they found out statistically that most of the black men that they stopped and frisked in New York did not have drugs or guns on them. Because you know if you get caught with guns in New York, you're you're gone. Your life is finished. Okay? Classical Barris, remember the football player? When he did that, his whole football career was finished after that. Um, they found out statistically that the white that the white guys in New York were the ones who had the guns and the drugs on them that got overlooked by the police in in New York. Now that's just it's true. Look it up. Okay? Now, prostitution. Prostitution is at 58.6% amongst white white amongst white people, their community, and in the black community, prostitution is at 32.6%. So in that area, we do not lead in this country. Now, sex offense, and I know this very well. The white community leads in sex offense at 76.0%, where black people are at 21.5%. So we don't do sexual things. A lot of us talk about these things sometimes on panels, but for the most part, our community not that I'm, I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, that you haven't had young boys molested by family members or someone in the black community or even our women, but we do not engage in that behavior at a high level as the white community does. And I also know, looking at FBI statistics, that white men in, our, in this society, when it comes to domestic violence and abuse of the family, white men lead when it comes to the abuse of children and their wives in the family, not black men. Now, b- let me continue on with this drug use. Everyone thinks that drugs is synonymous with black people. No, 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 no. The majority of those who abuse drugs in this country is the white community at 72.5%, while the black community is at 25.7%. Gambling. We don't have a gambling problem either. The white community is at 50.6% with gambling problems. Okay, you've there's been situations where you got white guys out there gambling and they have to sell their homes because they're getting themselves in gambling trouble. Um, then black people are at 31.9% when it comes to gambling. Okay, so let's put the rest that black men are the criminals of American society, that we have a pathology for criminality and behaving in manners that are not appropriate. Uh, We just don't have it. That is a false narrative. And I'm going to always tell the truth when it comes to that. Tell the truth. Okay. This is a, uh, this has been a breaking news report. I'm glad that you all are here with me, but I also have another powerful news report. Tell the truth. And that breaking news report is that black men are doing a hell of a lot better in this society than we give them credit for. The last report, and I think uh, a lot of you have heard about this, black men, for the most part, 
when we are when we are going to school, when we're college educated, uh, when we're doing skilled trades, when we're productive in something, and we're uh, we are successful. Okay, because the last I heard, there was an article. Okay, and here it is on the screen, as you can see. Black men are at 2.5 uh, million black men. 2.5 million black men are successfully moving themselves into the upper middle class or have moved themselves into the upper middle class. And it's most important to note that one in every five black men walking around the streets today between age 18 and 64, within that 2.5 million are also successful okay in that upper to middle upper middle class it is it has been proven that if black men if when we get when we're given opportunity such as college education skilled trades whatever it may be when we're giving up a t opportunity we are successful okay now when i talked about uh, the white community in terms of white men are the most abusive towards their families and their children for those of you out here saying that black men do not take care of our children that we don't get married that's not true because they've already done statistics and you can go look them up that in this society we call america that black men are the number one fathers okay even when we're not involved with the mother of our child whether we're not married to our we have an ex-wife or there was a woman that we was involved in that was our girlfriend and we happened to get her pregnant black men are still striving to be in the life of their children. You've got this situation with the uh, uh, family courts and the child support that's all screwed up, that's causing problems between our relationship with our children and with the ex, okay? And the child support system is being used as a weapon against black men in this society, okay? Now, I was married for about 15 years, been divorced 11, have one daughter, I don't have any drama with my ex, but I've been involved in my child's life from day one. You know what I mean? She's on my insurance. She's on my, she's on my medical. If she has ish, go, things going on at school, I'm involved. She has, she's in, involved in sports, I'm involved, okay? I'm involved every step of the way. It really irks me on YouTube and off of YouTube and on panels when we push this narrative that black men, not everybody, but some people push the narrative that black men are absent fathers in a child's life. There could be reasons why that man is not in that child's life. You know, we always say that the man is absent, but we never ask, is the mother, the woman, is she doing something that could be keeping the man out of the life of that child? This, this is, there's instances where men are paying child support and they can't see their child. So it's very important uh, if you are a black man out there and you have a child, make sure you fight for 50-50 custody. And I know the courts are stacked against us. It doesn't work in our favor because they're making money off of us in this system. One of the flaws in the marriage system is that it's a contract. And when you break the word contract down, what is it? Con and track. It's a con game. Okay, because when you get married, you, you have to sign a marriage certificate. When you sign a marriage certificate, just like when you sign um, your license to drive, you just contracted with the state, with the government, to be able to do whatever they want to do. That's why you're giving a marriage certificate. You just give the state, you just gave the institution of marriage permission within the state, within this country, to interfere in your affairs. This is why it's very important that we as black men and the late and the women in your life it is better to mediate without letting the courts get involved because it causes a lot of problems, okay? So black men are great fathers. We want to be in the life of our, of, our, of, our, of our children. Black men, even though you've got the interracial stuff and the swirling and there's some black men that are with white women, for the most part, um, most black men that are married in this society, when they are married, they do tend to marry black women. And you go look that up too. Look it up. Okay? So this whole notion that black men are, don't take care of our children, that we're not educated, and education doesn't mean you went to college. Education means that you read, you study, you are a learned type person. Okay? And there are plenty of black men in YouTube and off YouTube. That's why I named all those brothers that I gave shout outs to because all of them are outstanding brothers. Outstanding brothers that are doing good things. Okay? And 
there are black, this notion that black men are not doing anything, we have to change the narrative. I think it was Brother AM1 who said that we have to create media outlets. And I believe uh, Athenian says this, black men need to have our own media to tell our own stories because if we don't tell our own stories and our own history, we leave it up for someone else to tell our stories. History means your story, our story. So we need to understand the importance of telling our own narratives and pushing our own re our realities. Because when I was in college, I had a professor who said, he or she who controls media controls the mind. Okay, if you control the mass media. Um, mass media continues to dictate what we are. What you see on television is not who we are. We are men. We have, we have things that pain us. We have stressors that bother us. I think some of the problems that we have either on YouTube and off YouTube as it relates to relations with our women is that we're both in pain. Black women are in pain. Black men are in pain. We often don't listen to each other. We need to have some common ground and come to, and work together. We're already together. It's just that our communication sometimes is off because there's a disconnect, in which means we're, we're off balance. So the feminine energy and the masculine energy is not in tune with each other, which causes us to have problems. A man has to be a man. A woman has to be a woman. We're too often trying to play uh, these cross road, uh, roles. So that's what I want to say, because too often these statistics that I read off, someone paints a narrative that that's what black men are based on what I said on these statistics, and I just showed you that we're not that. We are successful. We are, we are lawyers. We are doctors. We're educators. We're teachers. We are men of distinction. We are men of motivate. When I was in college, I joined the fraternity. Most of the men that I was used to being around when I was in school were very successful. I've had the privilege of meeting some of the most successful black men in this country that I have locked arms with just being in my organization and then also seeing these black men go out into the community and try to mentor and promote manhood, the making of the better man, okay? As black men, we should be able to exchange greetings with each other, enter, engage with one another and leave as brothers to make the world better for our people. So I'm going to leave you with that statement. I thank you everybody for being here for the Information Man Report. And this is Telling the Truth. Tell the truth. Thank you for being here. I want to give everybody a clap. That's right. And there we go. The Information Man News Report. Thank you. Peace, everybody. It's the info. It's the man with the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info, it's the man with the info Whatever you wanna know, come join the man with the info show It's the info, it's the info Whatever you wanna know, come join the man with the info show It's the info, we got the info